And we do wish you prosperity on this Chinese New Year's Day. Good morning. I'm Beth Ann Kozlovich. You're listening to The Conversation and about to hear Chris Vandercook. Good morning. Good morning, Beth Ann. <laughs> it's always good to look at the start of a new year as a time for change and bringing about prosperity. Well, that would be a very good thing for a lot of people who feel that they're deeply challenged. And we've talked about that quite a bit on this program. But this morning, we're going to talk about uh, a few other things with Congressman Mark Takai, whose list of issues is long. One topic, though, that was recently answered succinctly was his response to whether he'd run again, given his ongoing cancer treatment. That was a resounding yes. Congressman Mark Takai is back in Honolulu briefly, and he joins us now to look at some of his focus points in Congress this year, including action uh, by North Korea over the last uh, day or so. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Kungi fa choi. That too. <laughs> and, and nice to see you here. It's great to be home. Now, North Korea completed a long-range missile test under the guise of saying it's just a satellite launch. Uh, this followed a nuclear test last month. Now, in between, the House voted for expanding sanctions against North Korea. The bill is in the Senate now. If it passes, will the, those broadened sanctions, you think, be, be enough to control North Korea's actions? No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, one of um, a number of different uh, um, pieces. Um, you know, as as you as you know, the um, the uh, the launch as well as the nuclear test was in violation of a few um, UN um, accords. And and in fact, uh, you know, I'm hoping that the UN uh, starts uh, taking a look at it uh, soon. But um, this the the bill that we passed, and hopefully the Senate will pass addresses additional sanctions, in, including um, some restrictions in funds, and, and, and trying to really get at the root of how they're getting the, uh, the, the technology and the supplies for the b ballistic missile launches. So uh, I think it'll help, um, but this is a, a problem, a challenge for the entire world, um, and it's not only going to be uh, the United States getting involved, it's, it's going to be the whole world. How would you see a, a whole world involvement take shape, given the fact that, you know, UN marginally uh, effective at times, despite a lot of rhetoric, but it, when it really comes down to how do you stop some of those uh, actual things from getting to North Korea, how do you stop them from actually being able to impact so many other countries it, when, in, when North Korea doesn't seem to really care that much what other people think and, and also trying to do the best it can with what it has and that means taking the stance that it has over years. You know what's interesting is uh, about a year ago I had a chance to travel to Asia as part of a CODEL a congressional delegation headed by um, leader Pelosi and we had a chance to stop um, by it and talk to the president as well as other leaders in Myanmar Burma um, and we knew at that time that Burma was one of the uh, the nations that had a relationship, a close relationship with um, North Korea. And as uh, the only person sitting on the defense committee of the delegation, I had a chance to talk to the president. Now, he, he, he's no longer there, you know, because Yang mm -hmm. Sang Shih Shi and her, her, her party has taken over, uh, which is a good thing. Um, but there are people, or there, are, there are nations across the world um, that, that need to be... Um, uh, talk to and and challenge for their support of North Korea, and uh, I think uh, you know if we can restrict the access to funding uh, and the technology, uh, we'll we'll make better headway uh, in in this particular um, situation. But you know one of the challenges uh, when you deal with bad actors, and in this case, uh, King Jong Un is um, you know for all practical purposes, not only a bad actor, but he's just kind of um, a loose cannon. You know, it's, it's very difficult uh, to deal with um, a leadership and a regime uh, like that. Uh, but we gotta do our best, and like I said before, uh, it's, it's a world problem. We've gotta deal with it, um, not only the United States uh, sanctions and, and, and congressional action, but clearly the UN and, and, and Russia has to get involved and some of the other world powers need to get involved as well. Because we only have you for a limited time, mm -hmm. I want to ask you about th the Housing Opportunity Through Modernization Act that you voted for earlier this mm -hmm. month. Among other provisions, provisions, especially regarding HUD veterans programs, the measure would make some changes in how low-income people and, and families could use vouchers to move to units that are in 
better neighborhoods, giving them some choice with all of that. We had some issues with landlords not wanting to accept veterans, let alone just other people. What makes you think that somehow a bill like this or a measure like this nationally is going to make landlords, and particularly landlords in Hawaii, look at accepting vouchers as being a, a solution to uh, homelessness? Well, let me take a step back. Um, I- as you recall, in December, Congress passed the omnibus budget. And in that particular budget, there was uh, considerable emphasis on uh, the HUD, H- HUD programs, uh, including those focused on the elderly, persons with disabilities, Section 8, um, public housing, and then veterans. Uh, in fact, we've uh, um, overall increased the amount of funding to HUD uh, to $38 billion, which is about a 10% increase from the, the prior year. Um, so in, in terms of the funding for this fiscal year, ending September 30th, 2016, we've seen a tremendous um, bump up in federal funds, and as a result of that, uh, we're anticipating about a little less than 10% increase uh, for the programs in Hawaii. That's a good thing because uh, you know we, we need to provide on the federal side enough uh, federal support uh, to, to focus and, and fund these programs. Now, the bill that we uh, just passed uh, was years in the making. In fact, uh, initially we had heard that it might, uh, might be a tough uh, vote for the Democrats, although I'm very supportive of uh, uh, that bill. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it was nearly unanimous. And it was an opportunity for us to catch up on some of the uh, uh, difficulties that we've had with HUD programs over the years across the nation. You bring up HUD and... Last week, HUD, uh, which is a special housing advisor to uh, HUD Secretary Julian Castro, Jennifer Mm -hmm. Ho was in town, and she was saying that we're still far off from having a plan, but that we need to have a a long-term plan, and that we need more units. I mean, nothing that we don't know before, but really giving the indication that that plan is still in development. What do you think is a realistic plan timeline and and uh, and and what do you think it needs to have in it for us to make sense here in Hawaii given the fact that you know we're this finite little place well you know when I deployed in 2009 came back we created this task force uh, focused on veterans and service servicing of veterans and back then it was an issue uh, as well you know homelessness in the veteran community and the president has made it a priority to um, make sure that all veterans were housed uh, by the end of this year and you know that's that's a, a a goal that we'd like to do for Hawaii. We've we've uh, received a number of grants over the past few years, and I think we're making tremendous headway in that area, that constituency. I'd like to see some of the efforts that we've put into housing of veterans uh, who are homeless into the other areas. Um, but you know, this is a comprehensive. Um, challenging problem that everybody needs to get involved in, federal, state, and, and counties, and we're doing that. You know, at the federal level, as Jennifer m- might have mentioned, you know, we have the expertise. We, 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 we know what's working in the mainland and other jurisdictions, and then we also have funding. So, you know, during the next few months as we look at the funding for 2017, you know, it's my hope that we can continue the focus and, and support uh, on uh, federal funding. I wish we had more time, as always, but I thank you for the time that you were able to give us this morning. thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Congressman Mark Takai represents Hawaii's 1st District with a 20-year member in the House, the State House of Representatives before that. He serves on the House Arms Forces Committee and on the House Committee on Small Business.